let's begin with the name of Allah, the Beneficent and the Merciful. Dear learners, let's commence today's lesson about the dying sun, one of the topics which is not only something about the reality of the sun, but towards our understanding of universe and the divine. The Dying Sun is Lesson 1 of English, Book 2 of Intermediate, Second Year Class. This Book 2 is about modern prose and heroes. Lesson number 1, The Dying Sun, is written by Sir James Jeans. Sir James Jeans, the full name of Sir James Jeans is Sir James Hopwood Jeans. He was born on September 11, 1877 in London, England, and died on September 16, 1946 in Dorking, Surrey. He was an English physicist as well as a mathematician. He is the first one to propose that matter is continuously getting created throughout the universe. Now, dear learners, let me tell you the brief summary of the lesson. In this lesson, the writer has described about the size of stars and the number of stars, then how little is our Earth in space and distances between stars, and the most important, a very rare event when our Earth came into being. Then how planets came into being, including our Earth. Stars are hot balls of fire and sun is also a star. And then writer tells us that how life came into existence. He tells us that life started in simple organisms in the beginning. Then with the passage of time, it became more and more complex and finally produced beings human beings and then human beings try to understand purpose and nature of universe. This universe makes us frightened. Why? There are so many reasons that why this universe makes us frightened. Because of immense distances in the universe, then long stretches of time and human history very small in comparison, then our extreme loneliness and littleness of our home make us frightened. No sign of life anywhere except on earth. Empty space is too cold that life is not possible there. And stars are hot matter. There are only few system in, systems in space. Suitable physical conditions of life are needed to exist. Most important is temperature, where substances can exist in liquid state. Life can exist only in narrow belts where temperature is neither hot nor cold. And such belts are very rare, almost non-existent. Questions from prose will be short question answers in subjective paper and synonyms will be there in objective paper. There will be no Urdu translation question in your paper. Now, dear learners, first of all, I will read the text from your textbook and then I will tell you the synonyms of difficult words in that specific paragraph. And after reading the text from the book, I will do the explanation of that paragraph. So let's start our lesson. A few stars are known which are hardly bigger than the Earth, but most of them are so large that hundreds of thousands of Earths could be packed inside each and leave room to spare. Here, here and there, we find an immense star large enough to contain millions and millions of Earths. And the total number of stars in the universe is probably something like the total number of grains of sand on all the seashores of the world. Such is the littleness of our home in space when measured up against the total substance of the universe. So in this paragraph, following words, which you can see in front of you on your screens have been mentioned. So the packed, the word packed means enclosed or put inside. Then immense means huge 
big or massive, and grains means particles or fragments. The synonym of substance is mass or matter. Now in this paragraph, the writer has told us that stars are very large. Hundreds of thousands of earth could be packed inside each star and still room is left. This shows that stars are how large. Then in this paragraph, we have been told the total number of stars is like total number of grains of sand on all the seashores. And the writer tells us about the littleness of our home in space when it is measured up against the total substance of the universe. Now paragraph two, these millions of stars are wandering about in space. A few form groups with journey in company, but most of them travel alone. And they travel through a universe so immense that it is very, very rare event indeed for one star to come anywhere near to another. For the most part, each star makes its voyage in complete loneliness, like a ship on an empty ocean. In a scale model in which the stars are ships, the average ship will be well over a million miles from its nearest neighbor. From this, it is easy to understand why a star seldom finds another anywhere near it. Now, the synonyms of this paragraph number two are there in front of you. Rare means seldom or scarce or not often. The synonyms of wander are roam, move aimlessly or loiter. The meaning of room here in this paragraph is space and voyage means sea journey or travel. In this paragraph, the writer is telling us that millions of stars are wandering about in space. There are only a few stars which travel in company forming groups. Otherwise, most of the stars, they travel alone. And they travel at immense distances from one another. Immense means huge, large. So they travel at large distances from one another. And then a very rare event took place. What was that rare event? Rare event was that completely unusual for a star to come near another star. As you have read, that stars travel alone and they are at a great distance from one another. Now, the reason is stars travel in complete loneliness. That's why it is completely unusual for a star to come near another star. The writer has given us an example that it's like a ship on an empty ocean, that a ship can be taken as a star and star like a ship is traveling on an empty ocean. So this tells us about the complete loneliness of a star and how stars travel alone. Then in a scale model, stars are ships, the average ship more than a million miles away from its nearest neighbor. That's why it is easy to understand that it is almost impossible for a star to come near another star. And now the third paragraph. We believe, however, that some 2000 million years ago, this rare event took place and that another star wandering blindly through space happened to come near the sun. Just as the sun and moon raise tides on the earth, so this second star must have raised tides on the surface of the sun. But they would be very different from the little tides which the small mass of the moon raises in our oceans. An immense tidal wave must have traveled over the surface of the sun at last forming a mountain so high that we can hardly imagine it. Synonyms of paragraph three, tides, means waves or surge. The meaning of take place is happen or occur and exist means survive or remain. Imagine means visualize or think. So this rare event, 2000 million years ago, a rare event took place. Another star wandering blindly through space came near the sun. And as moon and sun raised tides on the earth, 
Similarly, the second star must have raised tides on the surface of the sun. Learners here, I would like to tell you another phenomenon, which is about that, how does the moon create tides? The moon affects the tides because of gravity. This is because the Earth's gravity is pulling you back down. The Earth's spinning means that another high tide occurs on the opposite side of the Earth to the moon. The moon has gravity of its own, which pulls the oceans and us towards it. The gravitational pull of the moon and the sun makes the water in the oceans bulge, causing a continuous change between high and low tide. So, the writer is telling us that as sun and moon cause tides on the surface of the earth, similarly, that second star must have raised tides on the surface of the sun. And these tides would be different from the little tides which moon raised in the oceans. A, a huge tidal wave must have traveled over the surface of the sun, which formed a high mountain beyond description. That mountain was so high that we cannot imagine it. That huge star. And now paragraph number four. As the cause of the disturbance came nearer and nearer, that cause of disturbance is that second star, that huge star. The mountain would rise higher and higher. And before the second star began to move away again, its tidal pull had become so powerful that this mountain was torn to pieces and threw off small parts of itself into space. These small pieces have been going round the sun ever since. They are the planets, great and small, of which our Earth is one. Now the explanation of this paragraph. In this paragraph, the writer is telling us that a huge star came nearer and nearer and mountain of gases would rise higher and higher on the surface of the sun. But before the second star moved away, its tidal pull became very powerful and that mountain was torn to pieces. That mountain which was formed on the surface of the sun. When that mountain was torn into pieces, then it threw off its pieces into space. And you know, actually these pieces were the pieces of sun. These pieces started revolving around sun and they are planets and our earth is one of them. Now coming towards paragraph number five, in course of time, the sun and other stars we see in the sky are all extremely hot, far too hot for life to exist on them. So also no doubt were the pieces of the sun when they were first thrown off. Gradually they became cooler until now, they have very little heat of their own left. Their warmth coming almost entirely from the radiation when the sun, which the sun pours down on them. Synonyms are thrown off means scattered, gradually, slowly or progressive. Radiation means raise and pour means throw down. So in this paragraph, Writer is telling us that sun and other stars are extremely hot. As I've told you in the summary of the lesson also, that all the stars are ex extremely hot. They are hot balls of fire. So sun is also a star. So sun and other stars are extremely hot. Life cannot exist on the stars. Pieces of sun were also too hot in the beginning. Gradually, they became cooler and very little heat of their own left. Now how they are warm. Their warmth actually is coming from the radiations of the sun, which sun is pouring down on them. Paragraph number six. In course of time, one of these cooling pieces gave birth to life. We do not know how, when, or why this happened. It started in simple organisms whose living power consisted chiefly in their being able to reproduce themselves before dying. But from these humble beginnings came a stream of life which, growing ever more and more complex, has in the end produced beings whose lives are largely centered in their feelings and ambitions. Their sense of beauty and the religions in which lie 
their highest hopes and noblest desires. Again, the synonyms of paragraph six, organisms means living beings, chiefly, mainly, humble, small or simple, complex means complicated and centered means focused. In this paragraph, the writer is telling us that cooling pieces which were thrown off from the surface of the sun, they gave birth to life. And then life started in simple organisms on earth. They only, what was their purpose? They only reproduced themselves before dying. And after some time, more and more complex life started. Life became more and more complex with the passage of time. And finally, beings were produced. Human beings were produced who have feelings and ambitions. They have a sense of beauty and they have most importantly religions in which they have highest hopes and desires. Synonyms of paragraph seven are in front of you. Let me read the text from your book. Although we cannot speak with any certainty, it seems almost likely that the human race came into existence in some such way as this. Standing on our little grain of sand, we try to discover the nature and purpose of the universe, which surrounds our home in space and time. Our first feeling is something like fear. We find the universe frightening because of its immense distances, which we do not understand. Frightening because of the stretches of time so great that we cannot imagine them making the whole of human history so very small in comparison. Frightening because of our extreme loneliness and because of the littleness of our home in space. A millionth part of grain of sand out of all the sea sand in the world. So this is the condition, this is the situation of our earth, that our earth is just a millionth part of a grain of sand out of all the sea sand in the world. Synonyms are certainty means surety, frightening, terrifying, stretches, continuous period of time, comparison, the process of comparing, and extreme means excessive. So in this paragraph number seven, the writer is telling us that perhaps life came into existence like this, that it started in the form of simple organisms in the beginning. Then man tries to discover the nature and purpose of universe. Now, universe appears very frightening to us for many reasons. What are the reasons? Because of its immense distances. As we have been told that stars are far, far away from one another. Great stretches of time and human history so small in comparison. Because of our extreme loneliness because of the littleness of our home in space. Now, dear learners, our home, Earth, is just a millionth part of a grain of sand out of all the sea sand on the shores in the world. Now, because we can't find any sign of life like ours anywhere except on Earth, so that's why this universe appears very frightening to us. Life is not possible anywhere except on earth because empty space is so cold all life would be frozen there now coming towards the next paragraph but above all else we find the universe frightening because we cannot find any sign of life that life like our own exists anywhere in it except on the earth Indeed, for the most part, empty space is so cold that all life in it would be frozen. Most of the matter in space is so hot as to make life on it impossible. Life does not seem to have any part in the plan of the universe, which produced our planetary system. Calculation shows that there can be only very few such systems in space. So, learners, writer is telling us that why life is not possible anywhere except on earth because empty space is so cold all life would be frozen there and matter in space and what is that matter stars matter in space is so hot that life would melt there so it seems that life 
does not have any plan in this universe. Paragraph number nine. Yet, so far as we can see, life of the kind we know on Earth can exist only on planets like the Earth. Why? It needs suitable physical conditions for its appearance, the most important of which is the temperature at which substances can exist in a liquid state. So, the writer is telling us that physical conditions necessary for life to exist are suitable temperature at which substances can exist in liquid state and that is the most important physical condition. Paragraph number 10. The stars themselves are far too hot for this. We may think of them as a collection of fires scattered through space, providing warmth in surroundings where the temperature is at most some four degrees above absolute zero. That is about 484 degrees of frost on the Fahrenheit scale. In the immense stretches of space beyond the Milky Way, it is colder still. Away from the fires, there is this unimaginable cold of hundreds of degrees of frost. Close up to them, there is a temperature of thousands of degrees at which all solids melt, all liquids boil. So synonyms are scattered means spread. Frost is the process of freezing. Milky Way is galaxy and unimaginable means unbelievable. In this paragraph, writer is telling that stars are too hot. They are a collection of fires. They are called hot balls of fire, scattered through space, providing warmth in surroundings because in space, temperature is four degrees above absolute zero, which means 484 degrees of frost on the Fahrenheit scale. Too cold that we cannot even imagine it. And beyond, beyond Milky Way, it is even colder. Away from stars, there is unimaginable cold where life would freeze. And near stars, there is temperature of thousands of degrees where all solids melt and all liquids boil. And now the last paragraph. Life can exist only in a narrow belt surrounding each of these fires at a certain distance where the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold. Outside these belts, life would be frozen. Inside it, it would be burnt up. A rough calculation shows that all such temperature belts within which life is possible, all added together, make up less than a thousand million millionth part of the whole of space. And even inside them, life must be very rare, for it is extremely unusual for suns to throw off planets as our sun has done. Probably only one star in 100,000 has a planet going around it at the right distance for life to be possible on it. So, dear learners, in this paragraph, Sir James Jeans tells us that life can exist only in a narrow belt around these fires at the distance. What are the requirements? At the distance, the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold. Why? Because outside these belts, life would be frozen because of too much cold. And inside it, life would be burnt because of too much heat. Now, such temperature belts are less than a thousand million million part of the whole space where life is possible. It means very rarely it can be imagined. Even then, life is very rare as it is very unusual for suns to throw off planets like our sun has done. Now, there is a probability. What is that probability? That one star in 100,000 has a planet going around it at the right distance so that life can exist there or life can be made possible. But as we have been told earlier, that it is not usual for suns to throw off their pieces like our sun has done. So dear students, dear learners, what we have to do, we need to, prote to protect 
and save our earth as it is the only home for us. So that is all about this lesson number one, the dying sun. I hope that you have understood this lesson properly. Now, like and share the video. Subscribe the channel. Press the bell icon to get the notifications as soon as the new videos are uploaded. Don't forget to comment below for new ideas, suggestions or queries. Take good care of yourself.